We've looked at the transfers, now let's talk tactics. Hello and welcome back to the Herta Save episode number 40 today. My name is Clate, this is Clate's FM and this is the Herta Save. In the last episode, we were having a look at the transfer history going back all the way to season one up to season 12 that we're in now and seeing which transfers made us the money which transfers put us on the map which transfers made us into the team that we are today the best team in the world it is official we won the club world cup in today's episode we're going to move away from transfers and we're going to have a look at tactics instead before we do have a quick look at those tactics though just a few results to update you on from the last time so since last episode we were about here somewhere start of december we have gone on a nice little run winning all of our games over the winter break except for one we did lose an away game against Borussia Dortmund. I'm not really sure what happened. We didn't play great. We lost 3-1 in the end. But just to flick through so you can see some of the scorers as we go through these games here. We did qualify through Group A. We top... No, we didn't. We came second in that group. Man City topped that group. You see Kilman still scoring goals. We had a friendly there as the winter break. Kilman scoring two in that game. Uh, Mbappe back from injury scoring in that draw against Leipzig. Leipzig have caused us problems both time we've played them this season actually which is an interesting one. A 3-1 away win there. Mbappe scoring and Jallo scoring. Kilman scored twice in this 5-0 win and then most recently we've beaten our rivals by Munich with a 3-1 victory. So tactics today then. We are going to play two games and we're going to use the two tactics that I have used for pretty much the whole time in this save. So the 12 seasons we've been playing this hair to save, there are two tactics we've employed. We're going to have a little look at both of them by playing the first game in one of them and then the second game in the other one. I know, genius, right? Uh, the first game then is against Wolfsburg who are doing okay in the league and we're playing away from home so we're going to play our slightly more defensive system in this game seeing if we can use that to get ourselves a result as they are third in the league we're away from home it's going to be a tough game and then we're going to play Freiburg in the cup quarter final we may switch up the team but we're going to play our more attacking tactic in this game we can contrast the two we can have a look at the way that the players behave during those games how the tactic actually ends up working and hopefully if you want to use those tactics you, you might have a look at them and think actually I'll have a go at those in my save the first tactic tactic then is this one here the tactic that we call the das register now if you've watched this whole series this will not be a new thing you will recognize this because it is the same tactics we used all the way back in i think it was like season three we properly settled into a routine of using these tactics das register is the one that is slightly more defensive and it is just slightly more defensive because of the defensive line and also because of this player here who plays just in front of the defense in a defensive midfield spot he's actually playing as a deep line playmaker but Again, just an extra play in here compared to the other tactic, which we will play in the second game, which is very similar, except we do have the two strikers and we take away this defensive midfielder and stick him up front. A few different roles in here. This is the Mit Caraccio, which we'll play in the second game. We'll explore this in more detail then. But first of all, we are going to play Das Regista, which looks like this. You might be wondering why it's called Das Regista. Way back when, this wasn't a deep line playmaker. When we had Arnie Meyer, he did play as a Regista in here, which is where the name came from. But since then, we've kind of moved away and we have instead a deep line playmaker, sometimes on defend, sometimes on support depending on who we're playing against. In possession, it looks like this. You see how we have pass into space. We do play out of the defense. We work the ball into the box. Shorter passing directness, lower tempo, passing the ball about a little bit more. And we also play on a positive mentality. In transition, we counter press, we counter, we distribute to the playmaker. That is Karsten Reichardt. What you might find interesting, actually, we distribute to the playmaker. We do have two playmakers. I know this is kind of contentious for some people. Two playmakers in midfield, what are you doing? Trust me. It's worked. I've just continued with it because it worked. I know it's kind of curious in itself a little bit, but if it works, go with it. And it does work for us. We've got a deep line playmaker and an advanced playmaker, and that's okay. In transition then, we do distribute to the playmaker. It's usually Karsten Reichardt. Keep an eye out for that. But sometimes the ball will skip here and go all the way to Piljavski or whoever is the advanced playmaker as well. Out of possession, we do have quite a low line. It's a standard defensive line. I'm sure that you're more used to seeing these high pressing defensive lines. We do have a much higher line of engagement though, which is, again, it seems to be at odds with one another, but it works. And that's what we, over many, many seasons, this is what we found to be the best system. We do say get stuck in. So look out for yellow cards. We prevent the goalkeeper short distribution though. And uh, our pressing intensity is extremely urgent and we use the offside trap. 
So those are the instructions. These are the player roles. We have a sweeper keeper in goal on defend. We have two ball playing defenders with complete wing backs on either side of them. In this game here, we're going to play Tromberg and Andro, not necessarily first choice. We're also going to play Costantino as a center back. Just because we've promised him game time, we've also promised Andro game time to get them both in. Costantino is going to play as a center back. This midfield three, the little triangle that we form in the middle, deep line playmaker, box to box midfielder and an advanced playmaker. And then two inverted wingers here. Sometimes I like to have one out and out winger, depends on the personnel. Because we're using Sabosla here, we're going to use him as an inverted winger and then a complete forward up front. That is the Das Regista then. Let's get ourselves into this first game using it and see if we can get a result. See if I've hyped it uploads and now we end up losing. That would be a disaster, really. Right, there are the two systems. They're going to play a 4-2-3-1. Fairly run-of-the-mill, really. They have Lazaro in this attacking midfield role, the number 10 role. They have Gabriel Veron, who used to play for us on this left-hand side. Watch out for him. He is a good player. There's our team over here. I'm going to put it on 2D so that you can... We've got a penalty. Ball was brought in and we've got a penalty. I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by the fact we've got a penalty that we're going to play on 2D so you can see where the chances might come from. You can see how the players behave in this system, see how they see their positioning, see how they line up. But we do have a pen. I believe that I don't know who's going to take this. Jallo, maybe it's going to be it is going to be Alu Jallo to take the penalty. We have the chance to go one nil up. Not great for the tactic, but I suppose it shows that set pieces are important. Alu Jallo, here he comes. Into the back of the net. Good penalty from him. Uh, Jallo starting at the moment, by the way, in this singular striker role because I've promised him some game time as well. We've got lots of players that are asking to be playing and I've had to change the team up to try and give them the game time that I've now promised them, which has been interesting, but we are still getting results with it. Even though this game, it's four shots for Wolfsburg compared to one shot for us. So maybe... Maybe this system, which is more defensive, is actually doing its job. We're restricting them, but we're not being as enterprising going forward as you might expect us to be or how we are usually when we do have those two strikers up front. It's a lot more with that low defensive line, a lot more defensively solid. We are on the attack here, though. Piliavski to Rijkaard, the playmaker. He's given it away. Costantino's committed himself and Lazaro is on the attack for them. The shot is straight at the keeper. Wolfsburg. Nice breakaway attack. No goal at the end of it. They do have a free kick now, though, and it's in. Jan Niklas Sharinga has equalized. It's another set piece. Trying to show these tactics off. Instead, we've just got lots of set pieces. Some free kicks swinging into the box, and that's where the goals are coming from. It's a header. It's a really good header. Christian Sassoni got nowhere near it in the goal. Half time then, and I suppose we've come back into it a little bit more. We do have the possession. That's that low tempo when we get the ball. We're trying to pass it around. They've had eight shots. We've had seven. It's been quite even. And I suppose that is reflected in the scoreline. 1-1 one, one at half time. We are underway in the second half. Bit of football in the middle. So Boslo finds Piliavski out wide to Tromberg. One of these complete wing backs. Look, getting himself forward. The cross is in. Piliavski, Bianchi smashes it over. You see those forwards pushing right up on those wings. And you see that we have two inverted wingers. So they're coming inside, leaving that space for those wing backs to get right up and down. All right, I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to bring Sabosli off. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do, where instead of having an inverted winger on this left-hand side, we're going to use an out-and-out -out winger in Davu Dore. See what that changes. Get loads of width on that left-hand side. See if we can cause them some problems. Highlight starts here then, and it is one back by Rijkaard, that deep line playmaker. And we are going to go out wide to the other side, to Bianchi. We do have then the width out here. You see how Dore's held his width out here. Here he comes. Dore down this left-hand side. The shot was really poor at the end of it. The system worked. The shot at the end of it, though, was poor. Piliavski's not having his best game. I'm going to replace him as well. Let's do David Mattress, one of our youngsters, to come on as our advanced playmaker in there. Let's also push it up to attacking, see if we can go and get another goal here. Otherwise, it may well be a draw. Again, a team that's in third place, a draw away from home. It's solid, this this tactic we've not really conceded any highlights the only highlight we had against us i think was that set piece you see how solid it is we've actually performed pretty well a draw it's not the best thing in the world it probably wouldn't have been the system that i would naturally use there but i wanted to show you it and i think you saw some glimpses of why it's a a good system there was a time where we play teams like bayern munich when bayern munich were really close to us in the league then they're, they're not anymore we would only win if we played this system if we went all if we went too gung-ho and played two strikers they would just destroy us so it's good to have different options with your tactics this is a really good one to be a little bit more defensively solid right what we're going to do now is we're going to get forward to this next game which is the cup game and i'm going to show you the two striker mitt caracho tactic 
All right, and we are back, and this is then that tactic, the mid Caracho, the two striker tactic, and it looks a bit like this. So this is the shape. You see, we have these two midfielders. Interestingly, both playmakers, I know we've talked about it. You might look at it straight away and think, two playmakers, what are you doing? Just trust me, it works, okay? It works. We've won lots of stuff with this. It works. It gets the best out of the players that we have. In the defence, we do have a wing back on either side, both on attack. Dirk Sprint is going to start as our left back in this game. It is a cup game, so get him in. Why not? I know it's what the people want to see. Armini and Aurelio as ball playing defenders and then a sweeper keeper on defend. That doesn't change from the other tactic. Advanced playmaker and deep line playmaker. Two of the roles we did have in our midfield three in the other tactic. And then we have an inverted winger in Bianchi and an out and out winger in Dore on the other side. Sometimes this will be inverted. It doesn't really bother me. We've got wing backs getting forward on either side as well so if we do have inverted wingers sometimes that's quite a nice dynamic anyway them coming inside and the, the wingers getting up and overlapping on this side I don't mind that too much two strikers then one complete forward and one advanced forward this kind of works together it's a quite nice they complement each other quite nicely these two roles I like it we're gonna have Haaland and Killman up front together in this game in terms of the instructions then we have in possession lots of instructions here shorter passing play out defense whipped crosses shoot on sight that gets us lots of set pieces actually you'll find you get lots of corners and lots of free kicks even from this shoot on sight instruction we know how overpowered set pieces seem to be especially corners if you can work them properly i recommend if you're struggling to break down defenses if you're struggling to make goals and you have good set piece options, shoot on sight is the is the thing to put on. We have overlapping and focusing play down the outsides of the pitch. Shorter passing directness and a standard tempo. Right, run of the mill in the middle there. In transition, we counter press, we counter. We distribute to our fullbacks here. That we, we really do use the fullbacks quite a lot here, which is you're going to see Dirk Sprint doing bits here. Taking short kicks as well. Out of possession, you see that line is pushed right up. Now we are getting in the faces of the opposition. Much higher defensive line, much higher higher line of engagement using the offside trap defensive width is really really narrow when we're defending and then we have used tighter marking and again extremely urgent in terms of our pressing intensity i've taken get stuck in off for this tactic that is the team that is the system this is the mick caracho let's get into our second game of the day it's against freiburg at home by the way it's a cup quarter final potential to win some more silverware here so we are taking this pretty seriously we do want to go through the team that i've picked is a strong team as we've just gone through it only real changes is david mattress comes in to start in the midfield and Sprint and Andro at fullbacks, I guess you could say, are kind of changes. Mbappe and Jallo, none of them are starting. We're going to go with Haaland and Killman up front. In fact, it's a cup game, isn't it? That means Carl Collier needs to play as well. Right, there's the team. They're going to go for a 4-4-2. Victor Osimhen is still playing in 2031 or whatever year we're in. I think it's 2031. He's playing for Freiburg up front. That's a fun one. And we are then underway. Quarterfinal begins here. We are more attacking than the last game. So I'd expect us to create a few more chances. As you can see straight away, we've created a couple of chances. There's a long throw, which is going to be cleared. Rijkaard's going to pick it up there. We're going to recycle this. Here we go again. Bianchi to the byline. Crosses Mattress. Smashes it in. David Mattress, this youngster, only scores worldies. And he scores a lot of worldies. He's only 19, I believe. He came through our youth academy and he's just scored his sixth goal of the season. He is some player, let me tell you that. He's going to turn out to be a real world beater. I'm sure of it now. Look at the goals he scores. Smashes this. Keeper gets hand to it. Can't keep it out. And we lead inside 10 minutes. This more attacking system... This is what it does. Dirk Sprint's picked up a booking. This this isn't good. We know what we know what can happen from this situation. Uh, you can see here though. Look at the pressing intensity. As soon as they have possession, we'll have a player go and face them and put the pressure on. And sometimes it will tell when we nick this ball, we then pounce and we are away. You see, look, here's Dirk Sprint going to face his man. He's on a yellow card. Be careful, Dirk. Be careful. He's been beaten by Clara, who gets himself into the box. And it's going to be, there's the pressing. They are going to get a chance at the end of it. But you see how hurried they are in possession. With this 4-2-4, we are right up in their faces. There's another long throw and it's headed over by Aurelio. And that's half time. You see that we have had more shots. We've created more chances. We've been the better team. Couple of bookings apiece. It's only 1-0 though. I'd expect us to kick on in this second half. We need to go and get a couple more goals, please. Change up front for us. I'm going to bring on Kylian Mbappe for Erling Haaland. That's a nice luxury to have, isn't it? To bring on Kylian Mbappe up front. I'll, I'll take it. It's not a bad option. Ball over the top. Killman's in behind. Killman can make it too. No, he can't. Who is this goalkeeper? We might need to sign him. He's very good. He's made some really important saves. 
20 minutes to go. Another long throw from Andro. Hoiks it into the box. Bianchi picks up the loose ball, though. Lovely run. Tries to curl one wide. 10 minutes to go. We are still dominant. We have a free kick here. Here is Rijkaard playing it out wide to Andro. Getting those fullbacks involved. He beats his man. Mbappe's there. Mbappe makes it 2-0. You see how the, I've said those wingbacks are important. Playing as complete wingbacks, they are massive in this system. It was Leonardo Andro who... You know, he's, he really faced up to his man here, who stuck with him, but he managed to get his cross in. Look, he stays with him, the defender. He gets his cross in, though, and Mbappe was there to apply the finish. Off the bench, 2-0 to us. That will be game, set, and match, and we're going to be going through to the semi-finals of this cup, where we could go and win another piece of silverware. Straight from their kickoff, we picked up the ball. It's Mattress driving forward, beating his man. Here he goes. Mattress, great run. Straight at the keeper at the end of it, though. Here he comes again. He's beaten a man again. Mattress driving forward again and puts it wide this time. He is some player, David Mattress. When he picks up the ball, things seem to happen. That's what you want from a young player. King has beaten Sprint to the ball. Sprint needs to sprint back. King. Oh, he's tried to make a tackle. He almost fouled him and almost got himself a red card there. Again. It's what it does, Dirk Sprint. We've got a few minutes left, though. We're going to see this game out. It's going to be a really comfortable win. This tactic, it works. If you have a strong team, this tactic works. If you are dominant... This is the type of tactic you want to be doing to assert that dominance. Mbappe adds a third. Lovely ball through from Carsten Reichardt. One of those playmakers in the midfield making plays happen there. Mbappe with the finish. You can rely on him to do that. Aurelia wins the header. Reichardt picks it up, look. And he just tries that cutting through ball. I mean, he doesn't just try it. He pulls it off brilliantly. Mbappe kind of goes round the keeper to finish it. 3-0. Game, set and match. There's the final whistle. It is comfortable. We are... We are going through to the semi-finals. Lovely stuff. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed that as a little look at the tactics. A little bit more in-depth than perhaps usual, usual when we look at those tactics. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If there's anything else that you want to see in terms of how we play our games, how we do our set pieces, how we set up the stuff, how we do our mentoring groups, how we do training, any of those things, you just need to put them in the comments and let me know. That is your thing. If you've got to the end of this video, comment what you'd want to see in a future video because... I mean, the games, we're expecting to win things. I'm quite, I want to keep playing through this save, but let's focus on different things too. Do you want to see the history of different players? Do you want to see, what do you want to see? Let me know and I can definitely do those things. But that will be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Before you go, as I say every time, but we are approaching a thousand subscribers. I say that because we are nearly up to 900, which means we're nearly a thousand. Please do subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Please do like the video. It helps with the algorithm, all that stuff. Please do leave those comments as I asked before. And uh, have a lovely rest of your day. That's, that's the final thing I want to say. I will see you soon. See you later. Bye-bye.